The Gonzalez family has had enough of your crap. They're not taking this junk anymore and shame on you for trying to call them out. Everything they're doing is good and everything you're saying is bad. Because they're not trying to grift from anybody and they're tired of all the hate. They've been through enough. So welcome to the point. Let's get to it. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Everything said here is alleged. Please do your own research and form your own opinion. And I try to be fair on this channel. And if more fair coverage and an open conversation is something you prefer, subscribe to this channel and hit that like button down below. Because the Gonzalez family is dealing with a tragedy. They lost their daughter in a horrific way. And they want justice. And we want justice. But once again, they're catching a lot of hate from all different sides over this GoFundMe account. Now, before the lights went out in Memphis, so to speak, where I live, the Gonzalez family has started a GoFundMe to raise money so they could attend the trial in Boise because the distance was way too far from their home. They had a goal of around $75,000, and last time I checked, they had somewhere around 55 k in donations to help them get over there and stay there for the duration of the trial. But since the start of that GoFundMe, they've caught a lot of negative feedback. People are calling them grifters. People are saying they're profiting off of Kaylee's passing. And people are saying they're profiting off of these interviews. Well, very recently on their Facebook page, and I'll paraphrase it here, but they've said enough is enough. They've been through a lot. They're dealing with tragedy. Why is everybody coming after them over this? And your negative comments have no place in their life. And I hate to phrase it like this, and I don't know any other way to say it, but it's almost as if the Gonzalez family has become professional victims. No matter what anybody says, regardless of what they do, if you make a statement speaking negatively about those individuals, they have a reply to it. And you are being callous, or you are being insensitive. But according to them, there is no Victims Advocate Fund that will provide them that type of money to attend this trial for that long. My only minor issue with it is not that they're trying to attend the trial for the duration of the trial, and I can't assume to know what they're going through and what their motive is for being there absolutely every single day, but isn't there an option to watch this trial through Zoom or some type of courtroom camera? It's not like if they don't attend this trial, every single day they're going to miss something. Cameras are set up so they can attend this thing wherever they live, in the comfort of their own home, if that's what they prefer. And that would mitigate the travel cost of them going down there or trying to stay down there in some type of Airbnb. Now, they have the right to seek funds and attend this trial for as long as they want to attend this trial because this is America. But they need to understand something. They became polarizing figures in this story. And none of the other victims' families are acting the way they're acting. Now, they want to make the case that everybody's having a problem with them over this GoFundMe. And I don't see it that way. Now, if you do, you can let me know down in the comments below because this is an open discussion channel. But let's keep a couple of things in mind here. While they've had enough of the hate in the comments directed towards them, we've had enough of the nonsense ourselves. And what's made them polarizing isn't them trying to get money to attend this trial. What's made them polarizing is their behavior in their previous comments. Nobody's jumping down their throat because they're trying to get justice for their daughter. But people are getting upset because you've injected yourself into this case. This case belongs in the hands of the judicial system, where people who have no ties to the victim or the defendant make the decisions. Because when you're too close to a case, it alters the decisions you may make. That is why judges sometimes recuse themselves. That is why prosecutors and criminal defense attorneys say there is a conflict. But you've been on TV saying you've conducted your own investigation and you found X, Y, and Z. And X, Y, and Z has led you to believe that Brian Kohlberger stalked the home. He hunted these individuals. And that story ran wild for months. Until it was proven in court that that was false information. That that was a false narrative. And in a lot of ways you spread that false information and created a prejudicial environment for Brian Kohlberger. And when you create that type of environment, you're denying real legitimate justice for your daughter. I don't personally have a problem with those individuals getting money in the GoFundMe, but I did have a problem with them conducting jury interviews. Honestly, what on earth were you thinking? How did you think it was a good idea to go to the community in Latah 
and ask a whole bunch of people what they knew about the case. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? I don't know what questions they asked, but those questions being asked to the community created the environment they were trying to say didn't exist. But it did exist, and it was proven to exist in court. That wasn't just the opinion of the defense. That was the opinion of the expert witness, and the judge agreed to that. So obviously, you sitting there conducting interviews was a bad move and a bad play. And the reality of the situation is you simply own a piece of the reason why this trial was moved. There have been numerous reports that also said members of your family went to these court hearings wearing inappropriate clothing. Now, I haven't personally seen any of these pictures to validate or verify any of that, but there were several individuals on this platform making videos about that particular subject. And if that is the case, that is just simply poor taste. We all understand and agree, you want justice for your daughter. We want justice for your daughter. But it is a horrible thing to sit there and think that maybe the wrong person is being charged with this. I haven't personally seen evidence to prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt, and I highly doubt you have either. What is also concerning is you're now apparently trying to inject yourself into the Ada community and seemingly restart this cycle that has led us to this point. Justice takes time. Justice is slow. None of us like it, but it is the reality of the situation. Putting your foot on the gas and never stopping and always complaining and saying everyone is attacking you is the wrong move. I'm sure there is a better way to describe this family other than saying they are professional victims. I just don't know of a better way personally, and if you know one, you can let me know down in the comments below. But to a degree, it is enough of the woe is me argument from those individuals. The reason so many people are coming after you, and not Ethan's family or Xana's family, is because they're waiting patiently. They're suffering heartbreak as well, but they're not conducting jury interviews. They're not, to my knowledge, spreading misinformation and prejudicial information. They're not constantly complaining about an individual's constitutional rights. I mean, if Brian did it, then he did it, but there has to be a right way to go about this thing. Constantly complaining because he has a suit on or he gets a vegan meal because he's a vegan is not preferential treatment. There are laws in place to ensure these things are happening. And it's my own personal understanding that his individual diet is going to be his diet in prison regardless. It has nothing to do with him being Brian Kohlberger. It has nothing to do with him being the suspect in the Idaho 4. That just happens to be the law in the state of Idaho. If you're a prisoner and you're a vegan, you get vegan meals. If he happened to have some type of religion, he would get those religious rights as well. That isn't preferential treatment. That is just humane treatment. So I personally think they're just getting it wrong right now. Yes, people are coming after him. People are upset that they're asking for money. But at some point, the response, look at what we're going through, just isn't going to fly anymore. Those other families are going through what you're going through. The community in Leyta is going through what you're going through. But none of those other individuals are beating a war drum. There is a process here. That process has to play out, and it has to play out legally. And you saying you have evidence to prove this, or you have evidence to prove that, does nothing but throw a wrench into the wheels of justice. I'm not personally jumping down your throat because you happen to be a parent of one of the victims. In fact, I've hardly jumped down your throat at all, and everybody who watches this channel can vouch for that. But slow down a little bit on the woe is me stuff. And not physically being there every day for this trial is not going to be the end of everything. This isn't 1945 where we have limited access to information. You could have attended every single moment of this trial through Zoom or whatever that closed circuit system is that they use in that courthouse. And then when it came time for you to give your victim impact statement, you could have showed up and given that victim impact statement. Everybody knows what you're going through is a tragedy. Everybody agrees what you're dealing with is heartbreaking. But the problem people are having is your behavior, how you're handling that grief. Now, I can't imagine what they're going through, and I hope I never have to. But I would hope that I would handle it a little bit like these other families. Because getting in front of national TV and saying all this stuff is preferential treatment is just absolute nonsense. And while they've had enough of the hate, we've had enough of the comments. And just for me personally, I can be sympathetic to what you're going through while not agreeing with the behavior. These videos aren't attacking you or your family. This is just me giving some perspective in how I see things. Now, if y'all see things differently, you can let me know down in the comments below. Y'all be safe now.